it's Jen Bengel here from Out of This World Literacy. Have you ever wondered how or when guided reading got its start and grew in popularity in elementary schools? The history of guided reading is actually fascinating. By thinking about how its practices have evolved, I'm hoping you'll get a new, fresh perspective on the teaching style that has been around for decades. In the 1940s, a man named Emmett Betts published a book called Foundations of Reading Instruction. He stressed the need to provide students with direct instruction in the area of reading. He highlighted four principles to support direct instruction. Number one, prepare students for the reading instruction. Number two, silent reading after oral reading. Number three, re-reading for new purpose, either silent or oral. And number four, follow up activities to meet the needs and interests of the students. In 1957, the book, Teaching Children to Read, was published by Gray and Reese. The book supported Betts' work and termed the phrase guided reading. Gray and Reese suggested this teaching method. Number one, ask a major motivating question about the text. Number two, ask other questions to guide the children through the story. And number three, answer the major motivating question. In every decade since the 1950s, top reading educators re-emphasized ideas surrounding guided reading in the books that they've published. In 1990, Margaret Mooney published Reading to, By, and With Students. She argued that guided reading was a way to read with students to accomplish reading achievements that would never happen from a teacher simply reading aloud to the class. Fountas and Pinnell further revolutionized guided reading in 1996 when they published Guided Reading, Good First Teaching for All Students. The shift was made from an instructional technique to use with small groups to a way of defining small group instruction. Even though the last 50 plus years have highlighted effective guided reading strategies, many classroom guided reading groups were operating with poor practices. The infamous three reading groups, for example, high, medium, and low readers, the bluebirds, robins, and crows, if you remember back in the day. A teacher directed round robin oral reading followed by a set of literal questions was common as well. The issues weren't with the idea of guided reading, rather the teaching practices happening within that small group. In the next episode, I will share with you five big things that guided reading is. The following episode after that, I'll share five things that guided reading is not. It's been my pleasure chatting with you today. Know that I am the biggest fan of the work that you and your students are doing in the classroom. If you'd like more teaching tips, you can check out out outofthisworldliteracy.com. If you'd like to check out some guided reading resources, you can visit jenbengleguidedreading.com. Until next time, you've got this.